Welcome to SciTech Culture with Steve Kern and Ben Warner, where we examine science, technology, and culture in the 21st century. Visit our website at scitechculture.com. Hello and welcome to this inaugural episode of SciTech Culture, the show where we discuss science, technology, and culture, sometimes individually or uh, maybe together, depending on how they intersect. Um, I'm one of your hosts, Ben Warner, and I'm joined uh, by my good friend and colleague, uh, my fellow co-host, Steve Kern. It's exciting, Steve, to be here. How are you? <laughs> oh, it's good, Ben. It is very exciting to be here uh, and be back again in our new format. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so just to um, sort of for those of you who may be joining us for the first time, I realize there'll be a lot of you that uh, uh, would have been following us for a few years now uh, with Fist Chat, the uh, the podcast uh, that we were previously running and uh, we finished up last month. Uh, but uh, just to give you an overview, um, you know, for those, like I said, for those of you who've been watching us for a while, this is going to seem sort of familiar, but we've got a little bit of a different emphasis in what we'll be discussing now in this show. Uh, but uh, for the rest of you who are new to the show it's uh we're going to be talking about science technology culture how they intersect and also just offer sort of our views on how things are going with uh, say daily events or even sort of bigger issues related to those topics and also just offer um our own uh opinions and experiences i guess um not just in this show but um in multiple formats as we'll uh, describe uh, over time um like, for example, um, we'll, we'll only be able to get a couple of episodes in before uh, I've, I'm going off to uh, Japan and China. And the uh, idea there is that uh, while I'm in Japan, at least I'll be able to, um, you know, sort of knock off uh, some content while I'm over there, maybe take some videos of some tech or, um, or even cultural things as well, uh, which I'm sure it'll be a good opportunity to do so. And while I'm doing that, Steve will be able to um, sort of be back at uh, home base here, um, uh, sort of of doing his own bit on, on his own as well so it's exciting in that in that sense so i'm looking looking forward to it the only thing is uh unfortunately in china i won't be able to upload anything at least directly because um it's all blocked but uh i'll uh, i'll still produce some i'll still produce some videos and uh, i'll just have to get them up after we come back so but yeah it's uh, it's ex- exciting to be here so um uh uh, I don't know about you, Steve, but um, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it should be uh, should be a good show and um, actually a good platform, I think is probably a good way to describe it. Yeah, and I think uh, today's episode, which you're about to introduce, is actually kind of nice. There's obviously the Apple influence and Steve Jobs behind all of today's topic. And, you know, there's a bit of a journey there, but the, the iPhone 6 is a, uh, a milestone in itself. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll preface it by saying that what we're going to, really be talking about today is mobile and wearable technology in your daily life. Uh, So we're going to start off with uh, the iPhone 6 and Apple uh, Watch Keynote um, uh, discussion, mainly because that's a good starting point. But just as an overview, uh, mobile and wearable technology is becoming and in some cases has already become uh, an intrinsic part of everyday life. Smartphones have become the most important computing device for most people, being incredibly powerful and portable. And the iPhone 6 is just the latest example of that. Obviously, all of the um, there's a lot of Android phones, top gear, top tier Android phones that fit into this uh, um, category, even Windows phones. I actually saw a Nokia 935 uh, recently that. Um, was very impressive. Uh, you know, I mean, it was a big phone, probably a bit too big for me, but um, uh, the screen was amazing and it was just so responsive and fast. And, um, you know, it was a really good example of that. But I mean, even the notes and the Galaxy phones and all of that sort of fit into that as well. Um, and most day to day computing the computing tasks can be achieved from these phones as well. So, Where's where they go to now? You know, they had the big uh, iPhone event back in 2007 with Steve Jobs, you know, famously getting up there and proclaiming that they were revolutionizing the mobile phone, which I think they did. But now the big tech giants are getting into wearable and health tech um, sort of device markets. Samsung and Google were probably the first ones into uh, into doing that. Um and they're, they're obviously going to start this new trend of a whole wave of new devices that we can't even really imagine yet how they're going to integrate with our lives. But I guess they're going to start with integrating them into so that they sort of tether with our smartphones. And then eventually, maybe they don't need to at all. That's probably uh, what will happen down the track. 
Um, just as an example, and uh, I posted on Instagram last night that because uh, I picked up a, a Fitbit uh, Flex, <laughs> so hopefully you can uh, hopefully you can see that there. Uh, What's the club, Ben. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a nice uh, easy to use device. Um, and uh, I'll I'll speak about it in context with the Apple Watch a bit later. But um, you know it you know tracks your steps, tracks how far you've uh, walked or run every day. It does has some sleep tracking in there as well, and um, uh, it syncs nicely with the iPhone. So yeah, I guess I mean taking it back to the uh, the iPhone event. I mean. The iPhone 6 is obviously, um, I, th- I think we should just say straight out that these keynotes are not really events anymore. They call them events. But, you know, the iPhone 6, I'm sure, is an excellent device and is going to be a huge improvement over its uh, predecessor. And I think a lot of people will be happy that the phones have gotten bigger. But I think the thing is, it's like with the iPhone 5, um, it wasn't really that different to the one before it. It's just that it did all the little things better and then when you add all of those things together the whole experience is vastly superior and I think that's what's going to happen with this phone as well. Yeah well I'd agree with that because I think actually uh, it's very hard to appreciate how advanced the iPhone 6 is and Mm. it's not advanced in in terms of technology because today you know whether you're looking at a, a Samsung phone they've all got great technology yeah. Um, or an iPhone. But I think the difference between Samsung and Google is they're pushing the limits of technology yeah. uh, very much in their design, whereas Apple's actually got a vision for technology. And that that is probably the Apple legacy from Steve Jobs is actually saying, well, we're going to build this. What's it going to do for the user? Not what can this phone do? It's important probably on that point to note that they pr- it's probably important that uh, both of those philosophies exist um, because yeah. that because that way it kind of uh, they kind of balance each other out in a way. Yeah, but I mean, look, really, the the Google and Samsung style philosophy is no different to the old PC in a beige box. You know, we'll up the chip, uh, we'll up the clock speed. You know, we'll give it more memory, we'll make it faster. It'll have more options. You know, hey, we can track people's eye movements and that. Yeah, did that go well? <laughs> you know, like it. You know, yeah. there's technology for technology's sake and I, I, I do actually think that Apple's Apple actually identifying the e-health, the data logging and the integration with wearable tech, even though I'm not a big fan of the iWatch, mm. um, really shows how advanced it is. I mean, Google has come up with Glass, which they still haven't released because I'm sure they don't actually know how to control it once it gets out in the wild. Yeah, but the iPhone six is a safe step, and you know, all it all it pretends or or, or promises to give is benefit. Yeah, uh, and I guess before we sort of expand out a bit further onto other um, types of devices and where these things go, and just to say finally uh, with the iPhone and the Apple Watch, is that. The iPhone has enough sensors in it um, from an e-health perspective to be able to do everything anyway. So uh, from what we could see, you know, with um, uh, the M8 chip uh, and a couple of other bits and pieces that they, they put in there, I think there was a barometer um, that they put in there, the gyroscope and all yeah. of that, that it's got enough to do all of this on its own. So to then spend another, I think they were starting at 350 bucks um, when they finally released them next year to to put on what is basically a really bulky looking watch actually i mean you know johnny ive can talk a lot about how how well it's designed and yeah it's nice looking in that but it it is a a bit of a bulky first edition watch and when you compare it to you know like the old fitbit or um even uh, the one that uh, the one that you're wearing there it's um a bit much and i don't really like the life track. yeah the life track um you know, are we going to be charging these things every seven hours? Um, you know, how ridiculous is it going to be? And do we need a watch that does all the things that they were showing? Well, uh, I, th- I think that this is, you know, the, the the watch as far as wearable tech goes and tethering it to phones is just a, a marketing slash sales opportunity. As you pointed out, inside the phone, hmm. uh, inside the iPhone 6 is not only the, the uh, technological capacity but... They're now building apps for it, you yeah. know, and uh, 
there, there's lots of functions, you know, the e-health, but also just the, I guess, uh, the interactivity now that mm. is seamless. So you were mentioning a couple of features uh, before the show, Ben. Yeah. Like the, um, the uh, credit point. On the phone. Oh yeah, the um, so Apple Pay is probably um, a good example of. So if we get away from wearables, then this is another example where, and I guess there was an overall sort of impression out of that keynote that um, it was about how they're improving people's lives, which uh, is not sort of a. I don't know if uh, a lot of technology has been described that, way, or at least consumer technology has been described in quite those terms and kind of goes to the cultural aspect of what we're talking about here in that a lot has been these devices are changing the way people behave and the apple pay thing is another example you know that will be able to sort of zip through the payment process uh assuming you know all of this gets up and running uh but going further i'm just wondering it's another like if we have another wearable device it's another thing we have to charge it's another thing we have to be distracted by um, I'm just wondering with all of this tech that's coming in that um, is it too much? Do we have to have all of these things? Because it'd be easy to just get lost in all of it. Oh, look, I agree. I think the next big keynote mm. that will be a proper keynote with a showstopper will be when Tim Cook or whoever else it is, uh, you know, doesn't pre-announce like Google have with Glass and now we're hanging around waiting for it. Yeah. But walks out with a jacket on, and the jacket's capable of everything. Yeah, and maybe, and that's that might be a good place to sort of discuss um, clothing. Or the hand like a watch. <laughs> that's right, um, clothing. Like there was um, that story that you'd sent me earlier in the week about um, scientists developing a flexible solar cell that can be woven into fabric. So it's like the uh, you know it charges itself. Or the jacket could, um, like say if it was built into a jacket, the jacket could be charging your devices um, yeah. while you're on the move. You know, you're at, it's nice and sunny out here today. Um, you know, you could go out for a two-hour walk or something and you're fully charging everything up with you as you go along. And there are other things as well. I mean, you can use kinetic return. Mm. So uh, in the 80s, it was very big to pump weights while you walked and that. All you need is is uh, some uh, kinetic sensors uh, mm. or, or motion-like uh, uh, rigs actually in your clothing and you can generate electricity. And they've done, they've done a lot of this and it can be generated statically or through kinetics. And, um, you know, these, these seem really far-fetched because we've never had clothes or materials that you can make wearable technologies out of. And yeah. we've also never had the technological capacity that we do in terms of our phones today. And now it's just a, a matter before someone puts them together. Having mm. said that, I do think that maybe, you know, a shirt that you would wear might generate charge or electricity, but surely, surely a wearable device has to be something you always have on you and that can only really be a watch or a phone as it has been for the last 10 years or so. Because a phone, I guess, is that, that slightly larger device that can do, has that interface that allows you to do more stuff, I guess. Well, I, I don't know why, if I'm happy with my phone, and granted, maybe we want a 4.7 inch phone <laughs> <laughs> size, minimum size. Some people like larger, phablets, tablets, laptops, you name it. Mm. But if we're happy to carry that size device around, do you really need, as you've just pointed out moments ago, do we need to have it like on our wrist as well? You only need one device. Whatever yeah. that device is, as long as you're comfortable using it, as long as it functions and achieves what you need it to achieve, that's, that's all you require. And I guess um, if it's going to be a watch... I don't know if it's going to be Google Glass, but say, say we'll mention them for the sake of argument. These devices, if they're going to be truly useful, have to operate independently of a phone. Um, exactly. And uh, the jury's sort of uh, sort of out on that. I mean, say with the Fitbit that I've got, it's um, easy enough for me to walk out without the phone because it will be recording all of my steps and activity. Yeah. But um, And then when I come back, it'll sync to the phone. But... Um, 
you know, the the the, the watch doesn't seem like uh, the Apple Watch doesn't seem like it can do that. Maybe down the track it will. I'm sure it will, but um, it doesn't look like it's uh, quite there yet. Um, so yeah, it's quite interesting. And just as a, a curious note, I think um, just from uh, Tim Cook's perspective, uh, it's almost like he needed to get this watch out so yeah. that he could show everyone that, you know, I don't know, maybe Steve had nothing to do with it, you know, kind of thing. Um, and that he was responsible for something. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> I, you know, I, it's, it's one of those things to me, it just, you know, I think to a lot of people, I mean, if you like your gadgets, if you love your tech wear, if you love Apple, then mm. I'm sure you'll love the watch, but I just, you know, I think it's a moot point as to whether it actually adds something to your life or not. It, yeah. it, it only adds to your life in terms that it's an accessory, not in terms that it actually provides something. Yeah. Just to, just to go a bit further on the sort of e-health aspects though, I think the other thing that Apple was sort of played down at this point is that you'll be able to monitor and send your data. So if you wake up one morning feeling ill with that phone, maybe with a watch, but you need to have the watch. With that phone, you can rec probably record your temperature. You can probably record, you know, like a lot of your vitals and send them off to a mobile service that says get to a doctor quick <laughs> or just, just take it easy today. And that's, I guess, where the uh, the, the beneficial use of uh, such a device would, uh, would come from. Um, I guess looking further too, I mean, you know, there's a lot that we can't imagine probably at this point um, and uh, that technology is just going to be interwoven into so many aspects of our lives even further going into the future. I guess the, uh, the inevitable question of uh, privacy comes up um, in terms of uh, tech and, um, and uh, it still keeps coming up, you know, people are still worried about this. They th something happens and uh, people freak out and... Uh, yeah, I, th I guess the la latest one was that uh, the celebrity photo thing. Um, the, whoever hacked the uh, the the iCloud thing. Um, that's just like, as an example of how people freak out over this sort of stuff. And the idea yeah, that who puts naked photos of themselves in the cloud. <laughs> that's a good question. If you're a celebrity, surely every image of you is so valuable you wouldn't leave it lying around in the cloud. Yeah, exactly. But if uh, the technology that um, is becoming, if we're starting to get all of these wearable technologies and they become smarter as uh, new, you know, new generations come through, you know, it could be collecting a whole host of information. But I think something that we were discussing just before we came on and you that you mentioned that, um, you know, back in the day when uh, science fiction was um, sort of uh, imagining all of this stuff, they kind of had a big brother pessimistic yeah. uh, kind of viewpoint to it. And you could argue that it's there, but I don't think uh, in the past, in, the, in, in say that science fiction, they ever imagined the, the positives out of the use of all of this technology. That there are so oh, many right. things. There are so many things that we're getting out of it. Um, and you know, if you want to be naive and say, you know, I'll be naive and say this that you know you have to store this like uh, some of this information in the cloud and share it with these tech giants because. That's part of the service. Um, you, you, you know, you provide the information, and then they'll able to provide a service that interprets that uh, information in a way that helps you either to become more healthy, do your job better, whatever it is. <coughs> yeah, look, that's precisely right. I, people are using all these devices, enjoying them, hmm. being more productive, being more in contact with friends yeah, and they're all great benefits. That's why everyone or practically everyone does have a phone. That's yeah. why practically everyone uses social media. That's why practically everyone uses services, whether they're cloud-based or whether they're just offered by Microsoft, Google or Apple. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The downside is that there are risks. But as simple as that, know the risks, protect yourselves from the dangers and enjoy the technology. Yeah, exactly, exactly. 
and because uh, it's only going to become more and more prevalent as we uh, as we go forward. You can't uh, you can't escape it <laughs> um, unless unless you uh, you know hold yourself up in a log cabin somewhere in the middle of nowhere um, and uh, live with nature or something. You're not going to uh, you're not going to escape it. Well, I think that will actually become very popular. <laughs> the, more, the more popular that wearable tech becomes, of course, people will always go the other way. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, but by the same token, look, you know, uh, people were afraid of all sorts of things in the past. Yeah. That is always possible. But the reality is, is that, you know, your health uh, could be better. And especially, you know, it's, it always comes back to the things, I'm fine today. Mm. But one day I might be older, I might be living alone, I might feel isolated, I might have mental health issues, I might have physical health issues. You know, being able to, to be monitored, choosing to be monitored, yeah. choosing to get feedback on how I am going as an individual may well be one of the aspects that helps me lead a happier, healthier life. Yep, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's and nothing wrong with that at all. And I think that that's, that's the mental hurdle. We've never had these technologies actually available. Yeah. People spend a lot of time thinking about how these technologies could have pitfalls and all those things. We've got these technologies now. They promise some really great advantages for us. Mm. And, you know, now I think we'll start to see the benefits and give it another 10 years and people wonder why they were ever off the net. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, we might slowly start to uh, to wrap it up now. Um, I was uh, just thinking, though, um, just in terms of this, uh, the technology aspect and, and life, you know, obviously um, built into this new platform of SciTech culture that we've got, you know, we both of us are going to have the capacity to um, produce video content on our own as well. But isn't it amazing that, um, you know, I've got a, uh, you know, a two-year-old iPhone and uh, I should say I successfully pre-ordered the iPhone 6 to this morning to my, my, to my surprise. I don't know how that actually happened. Um, and uh, although I, I'll still have to uh, reserve my judgment on the size if I'm going to be happy with that. But anyway, that's another issue. But isn't it amazing that, you know, um, I was actually prepared to go to, um, overseas with um, obviously my iPhone 5 because it's perfectly fine. And we're using... Uh, the, um, and we're using it to record this episode right now. But isn't it amazing that, um, you know, a device like that, you can just um, you know, go out with it. And this applies to a lot of high-end smartphones. You can go out with it. You can uh, shoot, edit, upload. It's, and if you obviously know what you're doing, it, it can look totally professional and everyone can see it straight away. I mean, what kind of a, you know, sort of a, you know, futuristic society we're living in now where you know you can carry around this tool in your pocket and um make this sort of thing happen oh look i agree ben i, I would maybe just finish on the question is something that sits in your pocket so easily sounds wearable to me yeah well it's in your pocket so you're wearing it so there you go <laughs> <laughs> all right we'll uh, we'll wrap it up there so um thanks steve for uh for for getting through with uh, our first episode here of SciTech Culture um, and look forward to many more to come. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone, for joining us on SciTech Culture. I'm looking forward to more, Ben. Absolutely. Uh, so visit our website. Uh, it's SciTechCulture.com. Uh, we've got a lot of links on there. I'm not going to go through all of them, but uh, basically we're all on social media and all of that, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Instagram, all of that. Um, and uh, just check out some of our content. We're actually going to be linking a whole bunch of different things into there. So our blogs, we'll have some fiction. We'll have the photography going on there. You'll see different types of videos etc. Um, and um, if you think anyone's interested in uh, weekly discussions, you've just had a, an example of one right now. So um, you'll uh, be seeing lots of that more in the future based on uh, this, uh, the topics of science, technology and culture. If you think anyone's interested in that, then uh, feel free to send them to our website and uh, we'd appreciate uh, that recommendation. All right. So that's it for our first episode. So we'll catch you next time.